We now go to the gentleman from Wisconsin for five minutes. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the witnesses. I uh, appreciate you being here today. Um, you know, as one of the newer folks around here, uh, I know when I signed up for this, uh, even though I served in my legislature for about 14 years, I knew it wasn't exactly going to be Mr. Smith goes to Washington, but I also didn't expect Groundhog's Day. And I, I have to admit, I, I feel a little bit um, like I'm watching another copy of Groundhog's Day. We've had, I think, 12 congressional hearings on Benghazi. Uh, this committee that I've been on, there's three this week alone uh, in the House. Uh, I know that I sat through part of the closed deposition with the um, Ambassador Pickering and uh, for several hours where we uh, asked some questions. Uh, we've gone through extensive conversations uh, about Benghazi, um, and I think sometimes in the bubble that's Washington, having just come from outside the bubble where real people were uh, before I, I got elected, you know, I think sometimes it's odd that members, um, we think that we know more uh, by visiting bases than someone who's been um, perhaps the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And I guess where my questions specifically are kind of following off Mr. Cartwright, um, what I'm most concerned about is what we're doing to make sure this never happens again, to make sure that we're actually honoring the lives of uh, Sean Smith and Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty and Chris Stevens by making sure that their uh, friends and co-workers and the people who work uh, across the world for us in those 270 plus uh, locations that we talked about uh, don't have to face uh, another Benghazi. You know, what we can do to make sure of that. And I think that's by far uh, the most important thing that we can do. And I know that, um, Ambassador Pickering, you specifically have said you want to make sure this never happens again. And part of uh, what the reports, both reports, have outlined are a number of recommendations. Um, I think one of the areas perhaps that we've been remiss on is Congress, in my opinion, uh, having come from the outside, spending more time out there than here, uh, is that we don't talk about what Congress has to do. Uh, this Congress has been uh, pretty much um, failing to get much of anything done. But I think when you look at the recommendations that came in your report and most recently in the newest report, there are specific things that Congress should be doing to make sure that we protect uh, our, our embassies in other locations across the world. And I think we're remiss in doing that. And I think what our job really should be is rather than poking and poking, hoping we get a gotcha, which I think sometimes happens too often, uh, let's figure out what we're doing to make sure this never, ever happens again and honor the lives of the people who lost their lives. So if, if I can ask specifically, Ambassador Pickering, you, you talked about the fact that the State Department immediately accepted those recommendations and they're in the process of implementing them. How about the recommendations you had for Congress? I think recommendation number 10. Have we moved at all on the recommendations that you've had for Congress to make sure that we're protecting our facilities across the world? I believe that on a couple of the recommendations that were made of an emergency character after the visit to the 19 posts I spoke about a minute ago with Mr. Langford, there have been moves by Congress. It has not been, put it this way, our brief or our responsibility to do the follow-up to the report. There are a number of our recommendations which have to be translated into legislation or legislative proposals. And on that, we rely on the State Department and the budget process to proceed to you. So I think that, in effect, the Congress in this case is not being asked ind independently to take initiatives, but hopefully to support the executive branch's recommendations to take our ideas and put them into action. So by Congress not moving on a budget, uh, kind of living on continuing resolutions as we have for the last four years, we really haven't had a chance to address the very recommendations I think that you've made in this report. And I don't know, sir, whether the, these will be SUPS 2014, 2015 proposals or not. That really comes beyond our responsibility, and sure. I would hesitate at this stage to try to give you a thought when I don't know. No, thank you. Well, and it's, it's my hope, Mr. Chairman, that you know, at some point as we continue, and I know we will continue, uh, to talk about uh, what happened in Benghazi, and it's a tragic incident, that we'll really focus on, I think, what Congress can do best, which is what do we make sure, how do we do that to make sure that nothing happens like this again? Um, so as much as I know we keep looking backwards, I think there's a reason why the eyes are in our front of our face and not the back of our head, because we actually have to figure what we're doing to make sure uh, that this doesn't happen. Those other 270 facilities, uh, so we honor the lives of the four people who lost uh, their lives, and I would hope and I uh, am hopeful that that's where we'll be uh, moving in the future.